sorry, plus. Let's quickly touch some of our remaining courses, <clears throat> remaining topics as regard the breakdowns that have been forwarded to the platform. What I intend doing is to give a summary of the various situations that may happen or that may affect some of these. Process. The number one situation, the number one situation is the situation of peer value. First, is not a reporting PA, PA5, and PB1. PA5 and PB1. So, in solving it, there is need to look into the capital and reserve of the subsidiary company. This is very, very important. And to calculate capital and reserve of the subsidiary company, which is also known as fair value. Capital and reserves. This video is going to be very, very short because it's only going to look into formats and the um, things that you need to do before you resolve a uh, question relating with group accounts. If your question do not have any adjustments, this is where you have to start from after getting your group structure. The next thing to do is to get the peer value. In this aspect of the book, we want to look at the um, issues of the subsidiary companies only. Then we may have what is referred to as date of acquisition, date of consolidation, then post acquisition balance is going to be here. Let's say what we are looking into is communicated with Naira as currency. So the first thing that will be considered here is equity shares. Equity shares of the subsidiary, please. Now, how do you identify subsidiary in your question? A statement will be given like this. Another one will be given like this. This is a parent company. And the one on this side is a subsidiary company. That is how to identify your parent company and subsidiary. So the equity shares, also known as uh, ordinary shares is going to be treated here. Let me bring those items before now talking about the balance. Then, if the person has premium, premium comes there because it's part of the equity shares of the, of the company. Then, if there's general reserves, if there's general reserves comes here, it's to be considered here. If there is a um, retained earnings, Retained earnings. The question which you must have also comes here. Then, if there is preventions, now the situation of preventions are, are in various um, in various stages. If the preventions is ordinary preventions, then it is to be treated inside in our current liability. But if it is um, irredeemable preventions, then in our subsequent video. We will look at the situation of irredeemable preferences. Now, these are the items that you will majorly have on the quest for them. Other equity components, other equity components, other equity components. So, if you have other equity components in the question, you bring it here. The figure relating with subsidiary, I need to emphasize that once again. Only the figure relating with subsidiary. Okay. Now, let's say this is the question that has been given to you. Statement of financial position is going to be given to you in a question. It is the figure in the statement of financial position that you are going to post here. Say, for instance, equity shares. You go to the statement of financial position given in the question. Go and lift equity shares relating with the current company. 
you post it here. Relating with subsidiary, sorry, you post it here. Then you go premium, go to the question. Inside the statement of financial position given, if there is premium there, you come and post the balance here. General reserves, it is equally to be lifted from the statement of financial position given. Now, all of them will be here. All those information from the statement of financial position, it will be here. Now, the information that will be at the date of acquisition, I uh, those information in the notes to the account or additional information. You go and check your additional information. You go and check your note to the account. Now, if you take additional information, the executive shares there, then the equity shares will now be posted there. If there is premium inside the note to the account for additional information, it is to be posted here. If there is general reserve, it is to be posted here. If there is retained any, it is to be posted here. If there is equity, other equity component, it is to be posted here. Now, this figure are figures at acquisition date, pre acquisition. So, and you can find those ones in the note to the account or additional information. Now, BOC. Less DOA will now give the balance of post acquisition. This minus this give the balance here. This minus this gives the balance here. DOC minus DOA give the balance here. DOC minus DOA give the balance here. Then we will now add. This is the total value at DOA, total value at DOC, and total value at post acquisition. Now, if you check note to the account, you check note to the account or additional information, and you do not find any of these items, then it means that the same item here is going to be here. Say, for instance, in the statement of financial position given, we have a uh, share premium to be 200. You now check into the additional information. There is no share premium there. You check into the notes to the account. There is no premium there. Then it means that the same balance of this 200 is going to be here. Majorly, equity shares are always like that. That's why the first item is here are always dash. After ascertaining your clear value, what is next to do? You take this one as working note one. What is next to do? Working note two is NCI, calculation of NCI. Calculation of non controlling interest. NCI. This is the part of the equity shares that the parent company do not have control over. And according to IFRS 3, this NCI is to be calculated as NCI value at DOE, NCI value at DOE, at, at NCI shares of, shares of post acquisition balance. Post acquisition, we add this together to have our NCI. Now, NCI value at DOE. This is the value at DOE. Assuming our NCI is 25%, so we will now find 25%, 25% of the value at DOE. That's what we will post here. Add NCI shares of post acquisition balance. Say also, if our NCI is 25% of post acquisition, the balance here will now be posted here. It is the value that we add. This is how to calculate our NCI. The next item to calculate is goodwill. I was still working on three. <coughs> the calculation of goodwill. Calculation of goodwill. Goodwill is calculated as 
cost of investment, cost of investment in subsidiary, cost of investment in subsidiary at at SCI value, SCI value at VOA, the value here is to be added here, then to have our Cauchy consideration. Cauchy consideration. Then less, less fair value. Less fair value at DOE, especially fair value at DOE, because there are three fair value here. So DOE, DOC was acquisition, but what we are using is at DOE. We less this to now have our goodwill. If the goodwill we have is positive goodwill, if it is positive goodwill, it is to be posted. It is to be posted to now, current assets. If the goodwill is positive, it's to be posted to no current assets. Then if the goodwill is negative, it's to be added to the retaining of the parent company. Let me recap. If the goodwill is positive, it's to be posted to no current assets as intangible assets. And if it is negative, it is to be added to the retaining of the parent company. Now, after this, working with four, the next thing to calculate is consolidated retaining. Consolidated retained retained earnings. In this case, we want to look into the retaining of the parent company. So the first thing to bring here is the retained earning of the parent company. Parent company's retained earning. Parent company's retained earnings. We bring it here. If we have gotten negative goodwill, less negative goodwill. Negative goodwill, we will less it, we will deduct it from here. We have our balance, then we now add, add parent company shares of both acquisition. Parent company shares of post acquisition balance. Now, the hypothetical example we are making SCI is valued at 25% here. Automatically, parent company is 75. So here we will now see 75% of post acquisition. Post acquisition. It is the value that we bring here to have our consolidated retail any. If you go and check the NCI, you will see that the NCI share of post acquisition is posted here. Then the parent company shares of post acquisition is to be posted into the retained earning of the parent company. This is how we are going to adjust our book. After doing this adjustment, all other elements in the statement of financial position given are to be consolidated and posted. Recall that this is a format where your account doesn't have any adjustments. This is how the format will look like. Then if your account has adjustments, this format is going to dramatically change. Adjustments such as if there is impairment, if there is unrealized profit on inventory, if there is adjusted um, profit on non-current assets, if there is fair value on non-current assets, all these can cause adjustments to our notes. So this is the summary where your account doesn't have any adjustments. Number five, which invariably is supposed to come as number one is the group structure. The group structure is the first thing to do when you are solving a question relating with company accounts. So, and this is how the group structure used to look like. 
A, which is a parent company. B is the subsidiary. A has acquired seventy five percent of subsidiary. This is how the group structure will look like. If you don't use this format, you can also use this format. A P L C acquired B P L C with seventy five percent holding percent. So. If you don't use this structure, you make use of this structure. Every other element, you add them together, you consolidate them together, and you post. Thank you very much. I believe that if you watch this video, you'll be able to solve question number one on the question given to us on our platform. And if you are unable to solve that, we will still come with solution. Thank you very much.